All right, so Haley, are you hearing any concerns among top Jewish leaders here at home about how Prime Minister Netanyahu is executing this operation? And, and do you see any potential risks to Israel in losing global support uh, after the weeks of, of such a, su a stunning attack by Hamas? It's clear that no one wants civilian casualties in this conflict other than Hamas, which is intentionally using hospitals as military bases, using Palestinians as human shields, diverting humanitarian supplies to build tunnels under schools, under mosques, under hospitals, where they're likely keeping 240 hostages. This underscores why there can be no moral equivalence between the actions of Israel and those of Hamas. And as Secretary Blinken said today, Hamas doesn't care one iota for the welfare of the Palestinian people. It's why they must be held accountable for the horrific slaughter of over 1,400 people, including 31 Americans. And a ceasefire at this time would allow Hamas to regroup and attack again. This isn't just speculation. It's the stated intent of Hamas leaders as recently as yesterday. There was a ceasefire in place on October 6th. It was the ceasefire that ended the last conflict between Israel and Hamas in 2021. And Hamas used that opportunity for two years to plan the most horrific slaughter of the Jewish people since the Holocaust. So it's clear that there cannot be a ceasefire at this time. But Secretary Blinken, President Biden are doing everything they can to ensure two things, and that is that the hostages get out and humanitarian aid gets in to innocent Palestinians. So, Admiral, we just heard uh, from the Hezbollah leader. Uh, you, I'm sure you heard Matt Bradley's report. Uh, what should we take from his rhetoric? Is this just firing up his base, or is there a real concern that Hezbollah could extend their operations into Israel or perhaps even further south? Yeah, we can't discount entirely the idea that Tehran, and believe me, that speech was essentially written in Tehran uh, and pumped into the lips of Nasrallah, a creature of the Iranian theocracy. Uh, there is no doubt that there is a possibility Iran could try and sort of unleash Hezbollah. I think it's unlikely. I'd call it 10 percent maybe 15 percent. That's still uncomfortably high. Uh, but I heard the speech, read it. Um, I see a lot of bluster, uh, but I don't see a, a declaration of war. I think playing to the base is correct. Final thought here. Um, he is very cognizant that 100 miles to the west of southern Lebanon are not one, but two American carrier strike groups, 160 combat aircraft. There are five squadrons of Air Force aircraft now in that region, 2,000 Marines afloat. There's a lot of combat power there. We don't intend to use it. We don't want to use it. But the president has made it very clear to the Iranians and therefore to the Hezbollah that should they unleash a massive attack on Israel, we will be game on in this thing. And he doesn't want that. He knows he would be on the losing end of that proposition, in my view. Therefore, chances, I think, are low, mm -hmm. but not completely impossible. All right, and Haley, quickly to you to, to wrap up. You've been critical uh, of the standalone Israel funding bill that passed the House last night. Uh, where do you th see the opening here? And will Republicans and Democrats be able to come to some sort of compromise to get funding to Israel as soon as possible? That standalone bill was no more than a show by Republicans aiming to score cheap political points at Israel's expense, as opposed to providing essential, immediate, and unconditional assistance. Uh, and despite Democrats' very strong support of Israel, the majority didn't vote for it because for the first time it conditioned aid to Israel on cuts to the IRS which were unnecessary, completely unrelated, and expensive. They would increase the deficit. 
So it also delayed the assistance that Israel so badly needs because Republicans knew this bill was dead on arrival. President Biden has threatened a veto. It does not have support in the Senate from Democrats or Republicans. So it's delayed this essential $14.3 billion in assistance, which has been pledged by President Biden that we need to deliver immediately. It was a political ploy. Okay, Haley Sophia, Admiral James Stravidis, thank you both for being here. We appreciate it.